YouTube, let's talk about the singleton pattern. Yeah, the singleton pattern's a little bit spicy. It's a little controversial these days. If you go and watch like any video on YouTube about the singleton pattern or read any article in the last couple years, there's big red flags everywhere and they're saying like, don't do this and warnings everywhere. And that's all done in good faith. But I think it's time to like balance things a little bit because really what these people are trying to illustrate is that when you're a beginner, the singleton pattern is really something that's easy to abuse and it gets you into trouble. But what is it? What is the singleton pattern? What am I even talking about? So a singleton is like an entity that is basically globally accessible. So in C sharp terms, that would make it like a static class. And then not only is it globally accessible, but there can only ever be one of them. So think like a game manager. You wouldn't want to have 10 game managers running in a single scene, managing like the same players and enemies and, you know, game settings, whatever it is, because uh, that would just be chaotic and things would break. So you have one singleton object, a game manager, an audio manager, an enemy manager. Managers are typically the thing done in common unity practices, and you just reference these things in all your other scripts. So what's the problem? What's the good and what's the bad? Well, let's talk about the good really quick. So what's nice about it is that it makes things really quick to access. If you have a game manager and it has, you know, the score, the player's score you're keeping on there, and you have a UI element and you don't want to have to like find the game manager and pull that value out of it, you can just kind of do like game manager dot instance dot get score or something like that. And you don't have to really worry about passing like a script back and forth or finding a component or pass a game object to another script. You don't have to really do that. If you have an audio manager, which is gonna be the example I show in a minute here, whether you're picking up a coin or colliding with an enemy or you know shooting your gun or attacking with your sword, whatever it is, if you have a sound effect, you can kind of just say audio manager dot instance dot play and then pass in an audio clip, and you don't have to really worry about having those things interact too much. Uh, but what is the downside? And why do people freak out about singletons and really try and scare that into new developers not to go crazy with them? Well, because unlike the other patterns, the command pattern and the observer pattern, which are two things I've discussed recently, in the singleton pattern, it's really the opposite. Because in like the observer pattern, it's all about decoupling your code and making things like focus on what they need to focus on, and only taking what's relevant more or less, like subscribing to an event from other game objects. But in the singleton pattern, you're literally making like a hard reference to these manager objects or like whatever your singletons are. And then they'll be scattered throughout your entire project. So you might have like an audio manager and you might have a hundred game objects that play sound in your game, because that is a realistic number once your project gets large enough. And now you have a hundred things hardly referencing this one audio manager object, uh, and that is a mess if you need to now make some changes or if you don't have your audio manager in your scene, everything breaks, like stuff like that. It just kind of gets messy. So that's where all the warnings come from is because you're kind of coupling your code together with these singletons. But does that mean you should never use them? I see a lot of people kind of say this. They, they kind of, I don't know, buff their own egos a little bit by saying, I make sure to never use singletons in my projects because it's bad practice. And I think that's a little bit too far. That's not really the case. If you understand why singletons can be dangerous because you're making hard references throughout your components and it can lead you into trouble down the road, but you still do it, that's fine. As long as you understand like what you're dealing with and you make a smart decision as to, I'm still going to use it here because it's just easier for my project and I, it's fine. Like It's not gonna cause me that many issues or any if you do it smart, then like go for it. And I also would like to say in smaller games or prototypes or game jams, singletons are awesome and you should 100% use them in those cases. If you're playing on working on a game for the next five years, yeah, maybe rethink your strategy and use a more flexible decoupled pattern. But if you're using a game jam over the weekend, use as many singletons, go crazy. Just get that game running. At least that's how I feel about it. My main point is singletons can be incredibly useful and they can be a really nice asset to your project, especially for things like an audio manager or even a game manager, depending on what type of game you're building. And I would just take people's warnings with a grain of salt. It's valuable advice what they're saying. They are not wrong at all. Some people go a little extreme with it and you don't need to be scared of them and feel like, oh, I used a singleton and now I, I'm screwed. My project's ruined. Like, Just calm down. 
it's going to be fine. And if you get to a point where it's actually causing you a lot of issues and it's like really hard to refactor your code, well, that's like a learning lesson right there. And yeah, it kind of sucks, but it's it's not that crazy of a thing to do. Anyway, so let's actually hop into a quick project. How do we build a singleton? What is a singleton? What does it look like? Because we can go through this very quickly. Okay, so I have this example project here with a coin in the right corner and an enemy in the left corner. And I want my player to collide with them and to play a sound effect. Because right now it's not doing anything. And so I have this single component. It's called play sound on collision. And we have this public audio clip, which is our sound effect we're gonna pass in. And we have a on trigger enter 2D function just to detect if we're colliding with the player based on tag for the example project. So what we wanna do is here say play sound. And so on this coin and enemy game object, I could select them both and then add an audio source if I wanted to. But that is kind of cumbersome for me. I don't want to have two distinct audio sources on these things. I'd rather just have a single audio source that I can pass a sound into and have it play. You know, I'm going to have more than one coin and more than one enemy in my scene. I don't want to have like 500 audio sources. That just doesn't sound like a good idea to me. So I'm going to go ahead and make an audio manager, which is a singleton. And so I'm going to make a new game object call it audio manager and I have this audio manager script prepared and I'll attach it and let's go through it okay so we have this audio manager script let's go through it line by line for our variables this is how we actually declare this component or this script as a singleton we say public static audio manager which is the same class right it's a reference to its own class and it, by convention, we call it instance. It could be called anything you want, but instance is the conventional name. We also have this audio source, which is gonna be on our audio manager. So I can actually, I forgot to do that. I can go back to the editor and just add an audio source to our audio manager game object, right? So we have an audio source and ignore this if else block here for a second. Down here, after we do that check, we're still just getting our component on our game object for the audio source. So we're gonna just set that in awake for now. Fair enough. All right, so let's go into this if else block because this is really how you ensure that there's only ever gonna be one instance of this audio manager script at a time. And again, what is a singleton? It's something that's globally accessible and there can only ever be one of them. That's why it's called a singleton. Okay, so we check to see if instance does not equal null, meaning it exists, an audio manager class has already been instantiated, and the instance does not equal this. So if an audio manager exists and it's not this, well, then we want to destroy it. And here I'm logging it and we'll see how this actually plays out in a second. But we just want to destroy it. So if there's more than one audio manager, we destroy it. Otherwise, if it's the first time we're ever creating an audio manager class, well, we're setting instance to this instance of it. That's why we call it instance. This is the instance. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, let's say I have my audio manager here and I just run it with a single audio manager. I could open the console and we could see setting audio manager instance, which was the call down here when we're creating it for the first time. This is working correctly. I can now come out of here and I can duplicate this twice. So now there's three audio managers, each with a script on it. And let's see what happens. We can run the game. The first line, it sets the instance correctly. And then the next two lines, it says destroying duplicate audio manager instance, which we see is in this top block here, right before we destroy it. So again, we're setting it once, destroying it twice. There's only ever gonna be one. I can actually pause it here and you'll see in our inspector, this audio manager two has the audio manager script, but audio manager one and the regular audio manager both don't have it anymore, it got deleted. So there's only one instance of the script. That's what makes it a singleton. Okay, I think you guys got it. And then we just have this public void play audio clip where we take an audio clip argument and then we just tell our audio source that's on our audio manager to play the sound effect. So back in our play sound on collision script, again, we have a public audio clip sound variable that we're gonna be able to pass in so we can pass in any sounds we want. And then when we collide with the player, well, we just wanna say audio manager dot instance dot play audio clip and I'll pass in our sound. All right, I'm gonna delete those extra audio managers 
And then on the coin, I'm going to put in this quack sound. I don't have a coin sound. And then on this enemy one, I'm going to put in a punch sound. I need headphones to make sure I can hear it. So I'm not lying to you guys. Okay, so we're back in the game. I got my headphones on. So I'm going to walk into this red square and we should hear a punch. That sounds good. And the coin should quack, which is weird. And it does. So this enables us to have a script like this where we pass in any sound effect we want and we can just reference audio manager.instance.playclip and pass it in. And we don't have to worry about having a ton of audio sources. We could just have this audio manager take care of it for us. And this is a really good use case for the singleton pattern. And again, if I ever wanted to change this, right? Like if this now needed to take something else, that would be a pain if I was calling this function in like a hundred different game objects. And that's something I need to be cognizant of going down, you know, my development path. But I am aware of it and it's fine. And in my small example project, it's fine. And if I'm making a smaller game, it's fine. And even if I'm making a really large triple A type game, I just need to be aware of it. If I want to change something where it's being used a lot, it's going to be a pain and you're going to have to do it or I'm going to have to, you know, come up with a new solution that doesn't involve changing it. But that's it. Like this is the power of the singleton pattern. You get a lot of good use out of it. And the only thing you need to do to make a singleton is create an instance variable that's static and then do this if else check, which is usually done in awake, by the way, not during start, because you want to do it while the game's loading, not like when it's already happened and because then you could have like three managers and everything's going to error out. So you want to do it in a wake and you just want to destroy any of the duplicate ones. That's it. So if you didn't know anything about singletons, hopefully you learned something here. And if you did and you were terrified of them, hopefully I like eased your anxiety a little bit. I mean, I use singletons a lot in my projects. It's not, you know, the end of the world. You know, I think I'm kind of beating a dead horse at this point by still talking about it. But it, it really feels like every single video is just slamming singletons and there's good reason for it. But I think it's a better mindset if you at least understand the danger and are able to make an educated decision on whether or not you should use it. Because in this case, I could also have used the observer pattern and I wouldn't have to worry about dependencies as much to do the exact same thing. But sometimes you don't really care about that and you're just trying to get something up quick. Again, like a game jam or a prototype, in which case singleton ahead, that's what I say. So hopefully this makes sense. Let me know what you think about singletons or if you've used them or if you're afraid to use them and why. I'd love to hear about it. Like the video below if you you know thought it was interesting. And you should single tint subscribe. I don't know a good joke for that. Alright, bye.